Hey guys, welcome to a new video. In this video here, we're going to take a look at how we can set up a whole project workflow for annotating your images in your machine learning and deep learning projects. So we're going to use Key Labs where we're going to create this whole playlist where we're basically just going to cover everything about the platform so you can go in and annotate your images, export them and train your own machine learning and deep learning models. So let's just jump straight into the platform and let's take a look at it. So we're going to jump straight into the Key Labs platform. We're going to cover three main things in this video. So first of all, we're going to cover the project workflow, how we can set it up, how we can customize a project workflow in here both for the use perspective but also for an admin or project manager perspective then we're going to talk about classes and also annotations how we can set up custom classes so first of all here we're going to have our project view so right now i'm from the admin perspective we can then go inside our houses when we go inside our projects we get all of these different tabs so we have our status files stages classes users reports and so on we're going to dive more into that in just a second but right now if we just go inside our files we have three different kind of images. We're just going to take a look at it. So this is one of the examples that we're going to take a look at. So we're basically just going to do segmentation on all these images here. So first of all here, we're basically just going to cover the project workflow. So if we go inside the stages, we can have multiple different stages for our images. First of all, we will normally have our annotation state where we go in and annotate the images either with bounding boxes, segmentation mask, bit mask. We can also like have key points if you're doing human post estimation or whatever task that we want to do. After we've annotated our images, we can send it further to a new element or like a new stage in our whole workflow. So this is how we can set up like a whole pipeline where we have annotation, a verification, then you can either like throw that into a deferred or decline state, or we can have a complete state, which will be our archived or our complete end data set that we can then use to train our AI models and also our machine learning and deep learning models on computer vision task. We can also go in and create custom stages, but let's just take a look at it here first. So this is the overall setup. So we have a type here, and then we can also specify a specific title for our stage. So right now we're just going to have annotation. We can also specify the color here, so we can do a lot of customizations in here. We can specify different annotation classes in here. We can have walls, windows, roof, flu, columns, and so on for a specific project and data set that we're working with. And we can also have IDs if we want to have specific IDs for our exports once we're going to train our actual like, models. One of the other really important thing is the transitioning. So how we transition between different stages. So after I've annotated our image, how do we want to transition and like what stage do we want to move into? So right now, if I hit annotation complete inside our annotation tool, then you will transition and move it to another stage, which will be verification. So we actually like have a guy or like an admin project manager that is actually like verifying all the images, all the annotations before throwing it into the complete stage, which will be our final data set that we're going to train our models. Because as I usually say, trash in is also trash out for our AI and specifically for our computer vision models. We can also add different transitions if we want to have like multiple stages in our um, workflow. After verification state, we can actually like send it into an another annotation state. So this is how we can set up different stages and also multiple transitionings. But the cool thing here with Keat Labs is that we can also go in and create custom stages. So I've already created a bunch here. So we have wall annotation, wall verification and walls annotated and also a specific stage for no walls. So this is good if you just have like annotators that needs to like go in and annotate label specific classes. I'll show you guys here how we can do it. So right now we can have an annotation, verification, misc or a final. So let's just go for annotation. We can specify the title. I've just chosen wall annotation. ID for export, we can choose whatever we want and we can add our transitions exactly the same way as we have here in the default ones. So for the wall annotations, I've just annotated complete. After that, we send it to verification. If we hit deferred, we're just going to refer to the deferred date and also the same with the declined. And this is how we can do it. And then inside our walls verification, we can then send it to walls annotated. And then after we have walls annotated, we can then basically just throw it into a complete data set. So this is the whole workflow. We can set it up, use it. It is really easy to get started with. And then you can have multiple different users taking care of each part. So if we just go back into the files tab again, we can go in and assign different users, also assign these images to different stages. So now we have our stages, we have our users. Now we can go in and assign those to that. So if we just choose an image here, let's just go with the third one. We can also take multiple images and it will act like distribute it automatically here with Key Labs. But now we're going to assign it specifically to a specific assignee, but also change the state and so on. We can also change the due date. So if there's a due date for the annotation, we can also specify that. But right now we're just going to change the state. So let's just throw it into Walt's annotation, apply. And we're going to set an assignee. Either we can a clear assignee or we can set an assignee. So right now I'm just going to set the assignee 
for the walls annotation and I'm going to set myself as the annotator. Then we can click OK and apply. And then this image here will be assigned to my other user account, which is a work account. And then I can go in and annotate the images from there. We can go up here into the wheel or like the tool, and then we can set different kind of like metrics that we want to take a look at. If you want to know the width and, and the height of our images, number of objects, when it was last changed, created, and all those different kind of things. But right now we're just taking a look at when it's created, last changes, the, the state that it's in right now, the number of objects, and also the due date. So those are the most important ones, especially like how many objects we have annotated in our images. Okay, so now we can go inside the status. The project status is open. We can set this uh, enable work for our walls annotation and also our walls verification. So right now we're just going to show this specific example with walls. So after that, we have both our stages. We have our status and we have everything set up. We can go inside our users. If we then scroll down, we have our walls annotation. I'll just delete this user. So for a wall annotation, we can see that we have one awaiting distribution. And then we can go in and add a user. So right now for our annotation, we're going to add this work account, which is myself. So we're just going to add that. And for the verification state, we can then add another user. So that could either be like an admin or a worker. So now we can go in and throw this image for our workflow and then just do transitionings between the different states. And then we have our whole annotation pipeline up and running. So after we have a whole pipeline and workflow up and running, we're just going to log in as this user and this will be the user and worker. So right now we have assigned this action here to me. So we have start vault annotation in the houses project. So I'm just going to hit start. So right now we can see that we get inside our annotation tools. We have all the objects over here to the left. And then we can basically just see all the different stages that we have over here to the left. So we can have annotation complete, deferred and declined. So this is the custom stage that we actually created ourselves. So right now, after we have actually like annotated our images, let's just say we have done all of that in here, then we can throw it to our annotation complete. We can also go up here and specify that here we can go in and add a bitmap for a wall. So right now I'm restricted to only adding walls because we have this custom workflow and this custom state that we have added. So let's just go in here and take our bitmap. So this could be one example on how we could create that just for annotation tool in here. So right now I can just hit apply and we're going to create this annotation bitmap. So right now, after that, we can go in and save our image. Make sure to actually like save your image before throwing this to annotation complete. So right now, I'm sure. We have no other task in this project here. We should contact our project manager. So now when we have annotated our image, we can then go into our verification user. And now we can see that we can start the walls verification and we should have one task in here to do. So right now we can see that it is loading the frame. And after that, I can either send it to verified or declined depending on the workflow that we have set up. Again, you can go in and add different bitmaps and so on here, but right now I'm just verifying that this annotation is correct. So I'm just hitting verified, and then we act like sent this to the final data set, and then we can start training our custom deep learning and machine learning models on this data set. So let's now hit back into our projects again for our admin tab. We can then go in and add additional classes or go in and change some of the previous classes that we had for our project. So right now we can go in and add a new class. You can choose all of these different types of so bounding boxes, oriented bounding boxes, polygons, skeletons, and bitmaps. So you can choose all of them here. You can basically just set the title ID for export. And then we have a number of different options that we can choose from. So it's just going to take the wall example here again that we've been using throughout this whole video. So right now we can see that we want to show the ID in the editor, show type of in the editor, and also we can specify how we want to export it. So right now we're using a bitmap, but we can also export it as a polygon with just points list for our mask. We can also export it as PNG and export to a combined PNG with all the different annotations that we have. So you can choose these different options and then you can also specify the color, ID for exports and so on. So the last thing here that I want to show you guys before you actually like a complete project manager within annotation tools where you can basically set up your whole own project workflow. You can manage different annotation stages and so on, which is really important. So the last thing that I want to show you guys here is the reports that we can generate. So we basically have four different reports. We have velocity, work log aggregated, work log raw data, and also file stats. We can just see a bunch of different metrics, like how long it's been on each annotation stage and also what stage it is in now. Then we can just basically just see like how many new objects are added, modified, how many are deleted, how many instances do we have and so on. So we can also see the aggregated one here, which is basically just the full name, role, login, tags, and so on, work time on all of these different things. So it's not really like too important, but we also have the raw data where we can see the start time, end time, and also the work time for specific users. And the last one is the file stat. So basically like how many objects do we have in our images? 
total instance counts, total account of the class wall, and all the other different kind of like classes that we have, but we will mainly focusing on the class wall. So again, you can see all of these different metrics, generate reports from it, and we can also go inside our status, see detail stats for our whole project. So annotations, verifications, deferred, how many is in the final data set, completed, walls annotations for all of these stages. We can see the number of objects, files, frames with objects, object instances, and then we can see the classes down here in the column. So this is really good to get a quick overview over it, but now you guys are a complete manager within Key Labs, where you can go in and create your whole workflows, pipelines for annotating machine learning and computer vision images. So thank you guys for watching this video here. I hope you'll learn a ton. We're going to create a whole playlist where we're going to cover each single part here and also how to annotate them to have machine learning annotation tools so you can automatically annotate your images and then you can basically just manage the whole workflow. So I hope to see you guys in the next video. Until then, happy learning.